I've, I've been stunned at how supportive they are. Yes. They've been. And then Piggly Wiggly, like I said, was yeah. not only did they say we, we want to buy from you, but they sent their refrigeration guy down to help us size the cooler. Oh, the cooler. did they? Yeah. Mm. Oh, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the, the concept is that yeah. because today less than 10% of what we eat in the state is actually grown, grown in the state. state. We mm -hmm. want to increase that mm -hmm. substantially. substantially. And yeah. the only way to do it, in spite of the wonderful benefits of farmers markets and CSAs, yeah. is to get into the conventional supply chain to grocery stores where, right. where mm -hmm. most people buy their food. Their food, exactly. And so the, we're wholesale, mm -hmm. you know, we don't do, we do, don't retail. do retail. It actually opened, and Lisa right. was out, before Sarah came, Lisa was out talking mm -hmm. to farmers and oh, working nice. on, we were all scrambling around doing budgets for things we want. Right. right. <laughs> Making sure that it would work before yeah. we really be, invested in it. That you could sustain it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah, it was and really that there feasible. was a need from farmers. Yes. Wow. That was good. But you know what's interesting is when Dana said, well, actually, we were such big scale, it's, it's sort of, uh, to me, it seems like we were in a cycle. Because in terms of our ancestry as Belagichi, yes, large scale farming, of course, was what we were enslaved for. But that whole period of time that Rick was talking about reconstruction, it went back down to right. smaller farms. Right. And one of the things that my mother always talks about, and everyone on our always talks about, was even with seafood and with farming. No one was doing one big truck of their stuff by themselves. Right. There would only be certain Gullah Geechee men who might own a truck or own a bus or something mm -hmm. like that. And they would gather the stuff from various people all over the island and then bring it to certain larger markets like here in Charleston right. and sell for everybody. Right. And then they would come back. How they kept track of this accounting, I don't know. I don't know if it was envelopes or what. The payroll was right. Uh, the payroll was right. <laughs> Just waiting until they come down the main road and stop the so and so yeah. and give them there and stop the so and so and give them there. And that's how it worked. And so yeah. when I saw this, I was like, hey, wait a minute. How do we get involved? How do we do this? You know? Yeah. And so then we talked to Sarah and she explained the whole process of her coming out to see that you really grow your food um, and that you grow it in a safe way, safe area, not that you got cows and everything walking through the veggies you know, right. and whatnot. And then she was like, she said, you don't have to be certified again for anything. But then once we go through that process, you know, set a price, negotiate the price, and then y'all sell it. And so I thought that that was wonderful because it, it fits. Right. I mean, it was a right. natural fit for Gullah Geechee. So we're now like saying, oh, we're going to have to get some people stand on side of the road again. We just got to make sure the payroll right. <laughs> you know, there's so much in this new old food system. Yes, yes. it is. That's people exactly who what care is. about everything, whether it's community, development, community prosperity, health, yes. health environment, environment. Yes. You name it. And mm -hmm. um, what you described was a it was a food economy that eventually succumbed to you know that big scale, the big scale aggregation and a lot of, of, of obstacles that the government that the legislation up. came in exactly right. and then not to go out yeah. and so we wanted to, and and so what we're doing this time of year is we're going to submit a package of legislation and we haven't finished it yet so okay. the idea we're all always open to ideas but mm -hmm. that will promote local farming, small scale farming, and try to begin to level the playing field so mm, that we can support. That's good. We can once again have a resilient and diverse food economy. Food economy. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Because you know, the, it was interesting, we were over here the other day and Bo Peterson came back from the Post of Courier to talk to Sarah about mm -hmm. drought. And he oh, said, yeah. well, what's the, what's the impact of droughts having on, on grocery? And Sarah said, well, here, you know, we haven't really, we've been on the edge of, edge of and not mm -hmm. substantially in the ground. Right. And which, the point being that if your entire food supply in mm -hmm. America is dependent on the Central Valley of California, yeah. 
you are at risk are right. from these Major. inevitable yeah, climatic changes. Mm -hmm. If you've got a diverse food system, then, then you've got a like resilient food exactly. system. Exactly. And healthier, better for the oh, Right. And right. like you said, because everything's right there, it's close by. It's not traveling these long distances, right. which again helps the environment because you don't have to have all these right. trucks on the road trucks, yeah. emitting That's all this stuff. Yeah. And you know what? So I, I'm sitting here. And the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corps, the man in the plan pages are flying in front of my face because for the past several years I've been chairing that. And the section on socioeconomic impact, we had to deal with economy. Mm -hmm. So now we have to end up with this terminology, market and non-market economy. Interestingly enough, you'll see the images of the calm in a uh, bushel basket and you'll see a truck with some turnip greens on the back of the truck. But that's on the non-market economy. Mm -hmm. Because that's how the way we sell our things and bargain with each other is looked at. But now you're talking about actually turning non-market back into market. Right, exactly. <laughs> you see what I mean? Right. Again. So it's, it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is, mm -hmm. it's the most exciting thing we've been involved with for a long, long time. And when I got into the environmental arena, well, we, we started in 1980. Okay. There were you know, people like Rick and I were younger then. And there was a certain enthusiasm for the, you know, our generation. generation. Yeah, you were generation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's sourdough. laughs> well, now this stuff can happen every 20 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we, we had, there was a movement, you know, the Earth Day and all that. Yeah, and, but over time, people became less and less um, involved with it, engaged, enthusiastic mm -hmm. about it. And the one thing that they seem to be coming to these days, mm -hmm. the next, the younger crowd, mm -hmm. is food, how food is grown, right. what, it is, what it does to them when they eat it, what right. it does for the landscape, where right. they grow it. And right. we've got a group of people involved with grow food who have really otherwise have no interest I'm going to want to get out there and lobby in Washington for Alaska Wilderness City, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It, which I still do. Right. But, I know. But it, you know, they want to be involved, yeah. and this is the, an entry point for people who are eventually going to become aware of community needs, right. broader environmental needed, energy or, needs, yes. you know, mm -hmm. toxic, toxic <laughs> yes. oyster bed right. restoration exactly. and benefits from. You know, from, from all the same thing in the fishing in the fishing side. Yeah, right. The fish, you know, when you catch fish, you want it, you want it to be healthy. Yeah, right. the environment that the fish are in have to, have to, to be, be healthy. healthy. Right. So that you get at it back in, back in, exactly. you're getting that kind of right. environmental right. quality. Quality. What you're, what you're focusing on, 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 is on a product. On a product that people know they can see. That's what makes it easier. That's what makes people are thinking about it at least three times a day. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. In America, you know, it's a little bit more, but, right. <laughs> but, but, but definitely what's so interesting when you mentioned about uh, Bowl, and Bowl, of course, in the article on our festival, right. but then Bowl um, focusing on drought, because that's what we left. Right. Um, we right. 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 with nights, um, with that whole discussion of drought, and the same thing, the gentleman who was sitting next to us, mm -hmm. who did the whole presentation on health. Jeff Scott. Jeff Scott. Jeff Scott. Yeah. Seafood yeah. safety. Yeah. I mean, and which we thought was an out, I mean, a scary but outstanding presentation that, you know, you just don't stop and think how droughts, when you live on an island, it, it's harder to recognize drought if you don't farm. Now, if you farm, of course, you immediately, oh, what's going on? It's a drought. You hear it's a drought, it's a drought. But if you're not a farmer, it's harder to recognize that that water is still around you all the time. Right. You're not necessarily realizing there is a drought because you see more. Right? You see what I'm saying? So, so the thing is, is then to think that, well, if there's a drought, your seafood can have bacteria in it growing more rapidly. And then I said, right, because the water would cleanse it out, and it's not getting the water that would flush it out. So that allows it to be like a pastry dish, right. Right. sitting there in the ocean, like the, again, the oysters are sitting there like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Can we get a drink here? <laughs> get some rain. You know, so it, it's really interesting how this whole thing, you know, connects. And that's what we were talking about, is making the community more aware of that. Because of course, our community consumes seafood. And they don't have no cook. Right. 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 Right.
I, mean, I, I don't know if this is a, a doable thing with, with the concept of this bag but, you know, the market maker thing, I don't know if you're going back to that, but the market maker thing, the thing that we were able to have to figure out, so I was to have a secret thing. Mm -hmm. And it'd be interesting to look at the model that you guys are looking at. Yeah. yeah. It's the only way that if, if there's enough product out there, we will right. be able to supply right. some of our local retailers with right. mm -hmm. seafood. And that's what I think there is an opportunity yeah. for that. Maybe at least with shrimp. Yeah. Because shrimp, we can, yeah. that's an annual crop we need that every year. Yeah. Right. And if these guys have a place to so exactly. 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 Right. 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 It's starting in the same way that agriculture took yeah. over here, which was with the CSA, you know, which kind of drummed up stores. You, you saw that people were interested yeah. in them, and there's yeah. a market for it. And yeah, so now you have the CSA yeah. and yeah. all of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. so yeah. the next yeah. step is yeah. yeah. it. didn't get local markets. Yeah. Retail, yeah. I mean, you know, retail markets yeah. to start buying. Buying, yeah. Local. was because then locals wouldn't have an overhead of all of that. You wouldn't be required to go through all these regulations and DHEC and everybody else on your back, the alphabet soup we call it, you know, showing up at your door where you have a facility that would have all the licensing and all the things like the car. And you could just continue to grow your food or harvest your food, bring it, and then prepare it and go from there. So, yeah, I know there's a lot of people who stop doing stuff just because, like you said, all the regulations stopped them. Not because they wanted to stop eating, <laughs> you know, <laughs> literally, you know, but because the regulations like, oh, it's too much to pay out here. I'm not going to prison. Right. Oh, I'm not farming that number. Right. Well, they ain't going to give me no money for it anyway, so forget it. And I hate you as a DA. I'm sick of that, you know. Right. You know right. Right. So, but if they knew that they don't have to deal with that aspect, they could just say, they could do what they do and then deliver it somewhere else and just know that the check coming back. You know, they would do it without hesitation. And we even have a lot of young kids with our first Gullah Family Day. We did it with the Gullah Fishing Association members bringing younger people out. And the Nature Conservancy shot it because they're going to do a photographic exhibit of this along with some of the other things. Yeah. So um, Joy Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Joy came down um, and with the photographer Clay. Um, that plays last night, but he lives up in North Carolina in the mountains. Um, so, and once they shot it, they were like, we want to send these pictures to TNC World, you know, to see if they'll do something in their magazine. Because they think it's so powerful to see there's still generations of Gullah Geechee's. But you hit on something I think that's really important. And I understand that young people are not seeing the value of the Gullah Geechee's. Right. Because they don't know what it is. They don't know what it is. But there are opportunities like this. They will come where, back. Where this is a different way of doing business. Yeah. It's not the corporate stuff, but it's more yes. it's more owned. You know, exactly. There's, there's four shots. Exactly. That these young people might actually they be able to yeah. stay in the drive. And yeah. their picture more. travels with yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah. And it's almost like there's some of the farmers. There's so much recognition, and they can take a lot of pride in it. And see, and the thing is, when you live on a family compound like we do, it's much easier to know. I could roll up my bed at 6 this morning, or I could roll up my bed at 11 o'clock. What I got to do is in front of the house. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. And I'm going to walk out, and I'm going to go pick these boxes or whatever they need, because the truck comes tomorrow, you know, yeah. or so-and-so coming with the truck, we're putting it on, we're going to Charleston and deliver it, and I got the rest of the day to myself. Yeah. That's us. I mean, the task system thing hasn't left us. Right. You know, yeah. Gullah is a master of task system. I'm going to be done with these people's stuff because I need to get to my stuff. Right. You know, I want to go fishing now. Yeah. So I'm going to finish farming from 6 to 8 that morning because the tide was right at 8 and we were leaving to go fishing. Right. This is how those teachers live. But their kids, like you said, the corporate environment, they don't like that environment. It, it's, it doesn't fit us. Yeah. It's too much of a box. We're like this. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so it's too much of a box. So a lot of those teachers can't survive it or they can stay in it. Well, you know what's going on. <laughs> if they stay in it, it's not an easy thing right. at all. You know, it's very trying um, because so antithetical to the culture. You know, it would be so right because after I worked on the mother, yeah, and I reconnected myself back to the earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we built this oven from scratch. We even laid the bricks. I had never. 
laid bricks before, mm -hmm. but just being connected to the earth mm -hmm. and just being able to do something for someone else besides yourself, right. it was so annoying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely different. Absolutely. You do right. it for them. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And he can, and it's so delicate. It's like even when I, I got my last piece of uh, trigger fish and I looked at just how you dress it, you know, I mean it's so dainty and it's so specific. I mean you know somebody cared to put it on there. And see, I love that kind of stuff because that's why I don't like the cook for people. If people think like it's gonna be in a rush, you can't come to my house. Because see, I know that I don't just stop and just throw stuff together. I'm the person that likes to lay it out, have it look away. So when I see that, I know how much care that took. You know? So yeah. Right the You know, and that's that's a that's a non-tangible uh aspect of it, but that is. But and, so, and so it's definitely something that a lot of people feel that a lot of people do not understand that. Like, you know, they're so used to getting stuff that don't even biodegrade. You know, and they mm -hmm. eat it. <laughs> right, on a plate. Or oh, between bonds. Mm. You know, you get a lot of stuff that's a sandwich between a bun and then people just consume it. So you don't even have the time to look at something like this and you say the care that was taken mm -hmm. and realize the energy that's put in that food. But for somebody to take their time and lay it there, you know, and do it, that's a lot of love and a lot of energy, like you said, focus as it is. But much less, like I was saying to you, uh, Chef BJ, is that you mentioned to me, you physically go out to the farm. So you were telling us what now? You said you actually learned that from the other chefs though. That they taught you to stay more in touch with it too. Yeah, well, a lot of the, the finer restaurants in Charleston, they deal with a lot of the local farms. Right. Um, so, I worked with Chef Jeremiah Davis for like two years. He really trained me and groomed me to, you know, want to take it to the utmost level. Right. Just okay. don't be content to say a lot, of, especially a lot of the African Americans, cooks in the city were the ones who inspired me mm -hmm. when I was younger. Okay. But, Honestly, a lot of them don't want to get to that level. They stay kind of content at one, uh, one where they point. At. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to be content. I always wanted to keep pushing myself. But that's part of my parents who always push me. Push you. Right. So I always want to push myself, push myself. And I also, well, I always mention Jeremiah because he's like my mentor. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, he always, he saw it in me. He was always on the road pushing me, mm -hmm. pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. Mm -hmm. So, and he taught me the value of the farm, like getting a part from the farm. But when I look back at it, also mm -hmm. being raised up by Your my parents, parents yeah. my father's family, my okay. grandfather's from Al Daniel Oh yeah. Um, and my mother's from Alameda. Oh yeah. So okay. and they grew up, I mean, like she was raised. Straight from them. From I got root. a story of my mother. <coughs> school bus one morning, she's supposed to put the watermelon. Oh, uh. -huh. She said, I go to school. Right. 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 It was one of those things back then. Yeah, it was not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I love being able to touch the, the, the product, the vegetables. I love to be able to look at it, smell it dirt. Mm -hmm. um, like my grandfather still has this property out in Kingsbury that we grow okra, we got sugar cane. Okay. Oh, yeah. I want some sugar cane. Nice. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the peanuts. So that's how come. So y'all grow your peanuts. Because I know you mentioned to me you wanted to make some things maybe with like the gravy, with the peanut well, gravy and I, other things. I've studied a lot of old Charleston cookbooks and you see right. the the Polish mm -hmm. one, West African uh, yeah. I'd say that's culture, that's which is kind of yeah. lost right. that mm -hmm. we got separated right. we went from cooking now. So that's what I'm studying. Kind of bring right, back. bring so it all back. You see, like, I'll, I make my own peanut butter if I have time. Your yeah. so mother talks to me about that a little bit. Right. It's a tedious job. It is a but tedious I, job. I've done. But the northern to like, yeah, throw it to a simple part of collard greens, you will be amazed what mm -hmm. it does. Really? Now you're going to make me try that again? No, you're going to make me work it over. Because <laughs> I still got my little mortar and stuff at home to do it. But it's, it's work. Yeah. But I mean, if you want to work out, you can you make your own peanut butter. You will get one real quick. 
so yeah so now it's interesting because i know also when you mentioned that about being in touch with the land and being in touch with the farmers and then being in touch with your fishermen like because we work with the Gullah Gija fishing association and i go out in the creek and my family on both sides that's all they did basically they got gills really under their clothes you know? that's why i went in the area to cover mine <laughs> but it's interesting because i always think about what happened to the creature right i'm that avatar person uh, so it's like I always think of what happened to the creature. So it's like the energy, like my thing about energy, I don't want all kind of crazy energy and cracky thing going on and you cooking food for me. Okay, so much less to think about who got this creature. How did this creature come out, you know, out of the water? How did this thing come out of the field? You know, how is it used? Is there's an energy in it, you know? And so again, you know, what kind of energy are you ingesting? You know, when people look at the, as you were mentioned earlier, the corporate, you know, places where all the creatures are raised and they're in these tight quarters, mm -hmm. instead of walking around naturally like God wanted them to do, there's a trauma there. Mm -hmm. There's stress there. So it's no wonder that, you know, depression medication is the highest sold medication in America, someone told me, or something like this, because people are so stressed out, like but they're not there. The, the pharmaceutical market. Okay, so, but why are they doing it? I mean, no one stops to think, what energy did you consume? So you consume the stress-filled energy in the very food that you ate, you know, and then how did that fuse itself with your DNA in such a way that now you are having these stress problems that you feel like you can't get over, you know? And just like even when El Patel said, coming out of corporate America, you reconnected yourself to the land, you know? And there's such a piece in that. I know like most Gullah Geechans, if we've lived in the urban area, one of the first things we'll say, uh-uh, I had to go home. I had to get from water. I had to get from water, you know? And I mean, I remember when I first went to Geneva, Switzerland, when I found Lake Geneva, mm. it was like finding water in, an away, in, in the desert. I it was like, <laughs> is that water? Is that yeah. water? Yeah. And you know, I started walking, and now I'm just walking alongside of it, you know, and I could have just stayed there for the rest of the afternoon. You know, and, and then we ended up dancing on Lake Geneva. Um, yeah. When he finally got to go over there with me, that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's, it's that dance, it's that energy, it's that flow, you know. And definitely, we feel it in your foot. That's exciting. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I wasn't in a salty mood because I've cooked in time, I'm not in a great mood. I'm feeling salty. Yeah. That's right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was very excited and a lot of love. So. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We could tell. We could taste it. <laughs> and they say the poop was in the pudding. Yeah. The poop been in the trickle fish this year. Yeah. Yeah. And it been yeah, in the rice pudding. Rice pudding, mm -hmm. <laughs> rice pudding with watermelon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Because as I look at everybody, I see the love. Oh, yeah. Everything, everybody down here is full of love. Yeah, so that's so good. I mean, it's going to be yeah. a great thing. Yes, it is already. Yeah, it's already. It is already. It is a blessing. Yeah. And definitely we thank y'all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you know, you. as our VIPs and there's several others who they all uh, email was Queen Quit, I'd love to, but I'm flying out of town. Queen Quit, I'd love to. I can't get out of court. Queen Quit, so so you know, it's only different things I'm like it's okay, it's okay. We wanted y'all at least know we thank y'all for supporting the event and supporting all our efforts and whatnot. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so y'all will be the first to know publicly, but next year we're in Houston. We're doing St. Helena Island. Yeah, you got the car, right? Yes, yeah. So definitely. So we'll be, we'll be hitting y'all up. I know. I can still read it. So you can still read it. Yeah. And we'll send you an electronic one, too. So you don't have to worry. So yeah, and so definitely uh, we'll be hitting y'all up so that y'all can, uh, you know, before you get vetoed again, yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll We're not get, you, get, you, sure. get you to uh, write some grant proposals to support the event. Yeah. The next year, because uh, we're going to do Hunting Island Nature Center, St. Helena, and then, um, God willing, TCL. Uh, will be part of it because yeah. the history of math, the school, and everything. Yeah. So we're working on that, and then folks will also yeah. get to go to Oyam Sunday African Village and Shelton. So they'll really get a good part of Beaufort County here um, and learn a lot about the culture, the history, and why we have a legacy on land here. You know, so you know. So, so this is all about land. It is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's the beginning.
say yeah. So Hana Chillin, as you can see, we couldn't send you no food on the camera and thing like that. And you see we ain't moving, right? <laughs> but, but no, that tells you right there that I'm here in the Gullah Geechee Nation that the food is good, the conversation is good. As Elder Town said, there's all the love. But we definitely can't send you nothing for taste there. But we send you a lot of love from we down here. So we're so glad that I'm gonna chill and get to join in and see how we get to start off with we VIP at this year Gullah Geechee Jubilee. And definitely, Hunter Chillin, take a note from the word, grow food. Okay, make sure to do that and make sure that you know where that food is coming from when you're now in front of y'all. Because take no more in plastic bag in the store. All right, so I want you for day of some more and keep on sticking with we and see more of this year Gullah Geechee Jubilee. This year the Queen Quet head for the body of the Gullah Geechee Nation and Hunter Chillin' know this year the work wide on. Mm-hmm.